What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, Secret Wars. We have some rumors about who will be helming this movie. We had our picks from a long time ago. It seemed like it was happening and that they gave or that they asked the question, deservingly so, to Ryan Kulu if he would probably helm Secret Wars, right? Um, it seems like he obviously is not interested. Um, and so the other names, and not just any names, Ryan. These well, are there's big one in names. particular I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, okay. Well, is that Qu Quaron, right? Yes. <laughs> this is one of the first... Avengers movies or, or, or Marvel movies that doesn't have a director. Um, what are your thoughts on what's going on with Secret Wars? And I've long said that I don't know if we get to Secret Wars. I don't, the only way we get to Secret Wars is if this movie costs a billion dollars to make. Brian, your thoughts? Well, look, as fun as I think it is to go through the exercise of Alfonso Cuaron directing a Marvel movie, I, I would be stunned. <laughs> stunned if that what did he was... do he so he did harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban it's the only franchise thing he did that is unilaterally regarded as the most creatively best looking of the eight harry potter films it is shot differently it has a different feel he changes how some of the characters are portrayed it he makes only one mistake he leaves out one in my opinion he leaves out one of the best scenes from the third book um in, in the final cut of the movie but other than that the movie is brilliant but that to me if you watch that movie with the other Harry Potter movies it is also clear they basically gave him the keys and said we're good with what you want to do we know Marvel doesn't do that <laughs> and they certainly aren't going to do it with this movie I just cannot see him with no prior familiarity with the MCU, as skilled and as legendary a director as he is, walking into this and tying all the strands that are going to be out there and doing it in a way that is, you know, wholeheartedly Quaron and still services what Kevin Feige and company need from the MCU formula. I just can't see it. It's just not his way. I mean, Brian, there are there have been directors which they have given full like, hey, do what you do, just stay within these parameters, let's just talk about it. But for the most part, do what you gotta do. James Gunn. Uh I don't know how much control uh Chloe Zhao had over the the, the Eternals. Uh, well, that may be too much. That's my point. Like they may uh, yeah, that may that may have ended poorly for them. But I yeah, I don't know. But Brian. <laughs> even 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 if they recognize that oh we gave too much control to Chloe Zhao for Eternals, okay, what the hell happened to all these other movies? What 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 no, went wrong right. there? And they gave Taika too much for Thor: Love and Thunder. No, you're right, they but that's don't. my point. Is all the more reason why they're less likely to do it. I mean, I, I mean, even even someone of Quaron's stature, they can't turn this into Ang Lee Hulk. That's my point. Is that like? I, I think he does great work with Harry Potter, but like there are some controversial. He turns Dumbledore into like a hippie. Like that's a choice. Like you either like it or you don't. But like he clearly changes the complexion of what that character is and how it's written, and nobody stopped him. Um, and so like you do run that risk where he's taking all of this existing IP and a lot of these like. Look, I'll throw this one out there. Okay, so let's say Hugh Jackman Wolverine does have a major part in Secret Wars, and he completely converts the personality of that character. People are going to feel a certain way about that. Oh, if that's absolutely. What so as great as he is, I kind of feel like he would need to have directed something else here before he gets, which is why the Coogler thing made sense. Coogler was the best director who had proven he could maintain his identity within the MCU and still kind of do enough MCU friendly things to where, you know, nobody looked sideways at the final product. Um, yeah. And so, but if he walked away from this, which it seems like he did, I don't know. I think it's far more likely that it's Levy or Raimi, which either one of those are, those are very different movies, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Like 
whatever we think of Multiverse of Madness, which I would argue is probably only half a Raimi movie. I think the second half of the movie is a Raimi movie where where Wanda is basically like a killer. Well, Wanda becomes Michael Myers. That is close to, to what Sam Raimi was even before he did Spider-Man way back in the day. Yes. So if you get a full Raimi movie, would you give him a shot? Um, that might be interesting. I probably would choose him and say the ceiling is higher if he got it right. Levy to me is the safe choice. And the thing that would scare me a little bit is if it is Levy coming off of Deadpool 3 and how we know that movie is kind of morphing into sort of cameo central, mm -hmm. that would also lead me to believe that Hugh Jackman will have a very large creative hand in Secret Wars because Levy is his guy. Yeah. And that's definitely part of the reason he's in Deadpool, not just Ryan Reynolds, because he and Levy work together on Real Steel. Um, so, If Deadpool does good numbers, Brian, I don't see that being... I see that being the way they go and choosing him to helm these movies, depending on what Deadpool does. Uh... Do you think it's purely numbers? Because I think it's a lock that the movie's going to do fine. I think the question is how good we think the movie is, right? This is the issue with multi... Like, if we're being fair to Sam Raimi, he directed a Doctor Strange movie that made just shy of a billion dollars. Oh, Those are the yeah. facts, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. not a movie that people are looking back on super fondly. Not all his fault, because we know it was a mess of a production he joined late. Mm -hmm. But this is my question. If Deadpool 3 is similarly polarizing, but does... 900 million to a billion dollars is sean levy a lock then to still get the job i think they're desperate enough to go that route the other thing i don't quite understand when i saw this list is maybe it's the spacing of the movies because they keep wanting to have these movies be tight like infinity war and endgame were like only one year apart but i find it curious that destin cretton is not a candidate for secret he never gets mentioned and i'm wondering is that his choice or theirs because if he's doing Kane, fair, right well this is my point so the the two most critically acclaimed marvel movies post endgame are no way home and shang chi now whatever you think of it that's the truth again facts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the box office was hindered by pandemic but still in theory made money Mm -hmm. If he directs Kang Dynasty and it's good, why isn't he the logical choice to direct Secret War? Why not delay Secret Wars a little more and just have him direct it? Like what? I, but yet he never comes up, which makes me think that he's just either doesn't want the job or they've just decided we're not doing the Russo brothers doing both of these movies again. We're doing different people on these two films. And, and I mean, what went wrong with that? <laughs> when, when well, that's my question, that right? <laughs> this is, that's what's weird, right? There's just so many questions. We just don't know what the hell is going on over there, Brian. We just don't know. I think there's a room full of people there that have turned Hollywood and and and, and numbers and forget about the IP now. It's who 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 do we got? Now I will say, if they wanted to talk to Quaron about something down the line i would not mind seeing seeing him take a crack at something in the x-verse that i think could be very interesting because i feel like those characters skew some of them skew a little closer to his quirks and his sort of style of storytelling i just i'm not saying he would do i don't know I don't, maybe he wasn't he wouldn't be cut out to do the central sort of x-men um conglomerate if you will but there's something in there if they wanted to have him play around in there you know him writing magneto that could be interesting I, I, th th he's such a talented guy like i'd be curious to see what he would do with a fresh slate versus coming in to kind of pick up the pieces of a mess quite honestly that's been created by other other films but i still don't see it happening <laughs> and they're in panic mode and they know that they're money makers avengers <clears throat> and so they're talking Avengers and Secret Wars and how they're going to do this and how they're going to do that. It just all, nothing they've done thus far makes me excited for those movies. No, there's no momentum right now. 
no momentum. I mean, that's what I mean. Like you know, the bar. I mean, the bar keeps getting lower for the Marvels. I don't think that's going to be the film, but they need they need it from somewhere. You know, like I would definitely say like. You know, Deadpool 3, it's a weird thing. Because like I said, I think it's a lock. The movie's going to make like $800 million at least. But uh, I just, I don't know how much of like a, a launch pad they're really going to get from it for the entire universe. That that I think is very TBD. So, and just, I don't know. I don't trust anything else. I mean, they're delaying, they're delaying a ton of other things, right? I mean, with the strikes going on and maybe because of Bob Iger realizing they have to space these out. I mean, you look at all the TV shows. I mean, like Ironheart, Daredevil, all these things are basically being pushed way back. Let me ask you this. Ironheart, does it come back? I still say yes um, because nah. of the commitment they made in the in the movie. I, I just think like they went too far. I think had they not shown as much of the hand as they did in, in Wakanda Forever, then maybe they could get out of jail free on that. But I think it's too far in. I think they're too far in. I think you're going to see one, at least one season of Iron Heart. I still think Armor Wars doesn't make it. Um, uh, they keep talking about it. They keep talking about it. They might wish Echo hadn't made it, but that might be too late. Um, but yeah, all these shows are getting pushed back. So, And like, you know, can we just put Agatha out of his misery? Did you see they changed the title of that show again? Like, what are you trying what to is do? It? What, what is it called? Fool? Dark Hole is it Dark Hole Diaries now or something? Yes, uh, something about Dark Hole. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about something pretty exciting, or, or, or could be, Brian. When the guy's name, we haven't heard this name for, a, excuse me, a minute, and we have been sort of in our own minds been casting for this role and who could be interesting Brian we even threw Henry Cavill's name into that joint if he was willing he he doesn't have with all due respect he doesn't have the guts to do doom he can't do doom it would be too by the way tough 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 end to him and I don't know if you watched The Witcher. That was not a great, not a great season that he went out on. I don't think. I, I, I thought it was rough. My wife has been weak. watching it. Yeah, he thought it was weak. I, I think been, season two I, was I, much better than season three. Oh yeah, yeah, season season two was way better. Um, Josh Hartnett, his name has been brought up for the for the possibility of playing this character, Brian. Your thoughts on? on um, the possibility of that happening well listen my my advice to to actors who have gone through cycles in hollywood is get yourself a small part in a christopher nolan movie and the doors magically reopen. because <laughs> i gotta be honest i hadn't thought about josh hartnett let alone seen josh hartnett until i went to see oppenheimer yeah. and he's good in oppenheimer and he has a major part in oppenheimer and yeah, I mean, other than the accent, which he actually would, would have to pivot, there's a couple of little things in Oppenheim where you're like, yeah, you're actually already not that far off from some of what Victor Von Doom would probably act like um, in his lesser evil moments, call it. But yeah, I think one thing with, with Hartner that was always true is he was always physically imposing. He was a really tall guy. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4". He's put on a fair amount of weight, which obviously can change for the role, but he's he's a big dude in Oppenheimer, just like not muscular big, but just big. He's physically large compared to Killian mm -hmm. Murphy, for example. So, mm -hmm. you know, you you can imagine that's a that's a part where you are masked a lot of the time. So it is physical acting, almost like Tom Hardy's Bane a little bit. And you could see like yeah. how he can pull that off. He's very he's, he's talented with the voice, which you have to yeah. be for this part. He is. He has a little bit of that understated quality that I think Victor Von Doom needs, right? Victor Von Doom is not a screamer, right? He's not a, he's not a shouter all the time, right? He's he's a thinker a lot of the time. So, um, and he's kind of sinister and more of a presence sometimes than than a line. So yeah, I you know when that crossed, I was like, I don't know how much legs there is to this because with a strike going on, I tend to feel like casting is you know kind of tough to actually do right now. But yeah. I was like, yeah, I could see it. Like I could see with the right type of story, he could he could pull it off, and he's definitely about to have a bit of a career resurgence off of Oppenheimer. So, sure, that's as good as anything I've heard so far. My concern, Brian, with all these things, future related with regards with regards to the MCU and 
is I don't want to I don't want us to be in an environment where again that the superhero genre has fallen out of favor and we get great stuff and people just ignore it and then it it's for our lifetime Brian it is probably over right uh that is my concern that is my hope is 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 is, is that they can do something so refreshing that it, it, it it reignites. Hopefully, James Gunn d- does that for for the superhero genre. But uh, Josh Hartnett as as, as possibly playing playing Doom to me is a win. If if he, if he does get to play, it, it is very. I'll be very curious to see how he plays that. I gotta watch Oppenheimer just to see what you're referring to in terms of how. He oh, is. you haven't seen that yet? Nah. Oh, if it's still playing in IMAX, definitely go see it. It's worth it. It's three hours, but it's worth it. I promise. So, mm. um, uh, so then you, 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 now you got my brain working. Does any such project already exist in your opinion? Is there a superhero genre movie or TV show that you would consider legitimately great that failed commercially and was forgotten? Does that already exist somewhere? Not okay, not good, like great. Like you would legitimately be like this movie or this series was incredible and nobody watched it. Andor. Oh, you can well is that you consider that part of superhero genre? That's to me is that uh, I consider is in the fantasy thing, um, uh no so like one thing that i thought of i don't know if it's considered like classic would be like carl urban's dread would you consider that great i was watching it the other day that's that an excellent do you consider that great nobody saw it but that is really good that is definitely one but i couldn't think of another one like you know even then i was trying to think back to like there are movies that are underrated like I would argue something like Blade Two is underrated now in, in, in the eyes of history. But it did okay at the box office. It wasn't forgotten in its time. Yeah. You know, like yeah. um the original like the Brian Stinger X Men movies did fine at the box office. So I can't call them, you know, forgotten. And then the ones that disappointed, I don't think are legitimately great. Like, you know, people go back and say, like, oh, Shazam One was reviewed really well. That's not a great movie. You you do point out give a good point in that Right, there are, there aren't a lot of movies that were great and that were overlooked, um, just because there was like, again, I'm forgiven. Well, it drives you home know. your point that if there is something truly great that is overlooked, that is, I don't know how you come back from that. Yeah, because the only other yeah. one I was like, T- I think you and I like this, but I don't think the the world thinks it's great. Would be like The Incredible Hulk. I think that's underrated and should have made more money than it did because yeah. it made exactly the same money as the Ang Lee Hulk. But I don't know that, like, even I would tell you that it's a fantastic, like, I don't no, know that no, I would no, tell you it's no, a no, classic no. film. It's just, no, I think no, it's no. better than it, it's I, I think you, you put it in his own category if it was like, what was the best Hulk film? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but Incredible Hulk for me was, is by far the best Incredible Hulk movie ever made. If, if we continue down this path, I, to me, like, there's an obvious can there's there's two obvious candidates for this and i hate to i hate to say it because neither of us wants this to happen if either or both of superman legacy and the batman part two are what we hope they can be and they do not bring people to the theater it is over because if batman and superman done well cannot get people excited anymore that i just don't believe there's a character out there that will for me, I would say this: Superman Legacy has to do well, has to, in order for the rest of the superhero genre to come back. Superhero, Superman Legacy has to be. And I and I and I again, I believe in James Gunn. I think he's gonna give us something visually amazing that we haven't seen with Superman the character before. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Hopefully, he can deliver. But um, 
uh, Josh Hartner being Doom is certainly a, a very exciting prospect and and, and 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 it brings a lot of curiosity as because doom is a role brian that is up there if not above thanos and i think that doom is a difficult character brian we've seen it twice already both have failed both have failed to live to that to that greatness that is, that doom is in the comics This is your last shot before us, Brian. Unless we hit hit it rich and we we say we're gonna make our own movies. <laughs> it is a wrap. <laughs> it's funny, like you're so jaded, you're no longer going to the theater. I'm still gonna go. You know, like you know, like I said, I'll go to Marvel's. Um, I, and the thing is, I wasn't gonna go to Marvel's opening weekend, but Warner Brothers took Dune off the calendar. So I yeah, have to yeah, go see yeah. it opening weekend now. <laughs> uh, I will go see Aquaman uh, opening weekend. I'll do all of it. Um, but yeah, my, my expectations are low. They're, they're low. So the question is, have they come down low enough? And I have the audience's expectations come down low enough for these projects now to that to where they actually can be better than feared. That that will happen at some point. I don't know if we're there yet, but like that also could happen. It would come. It would when that happens. It would be from word of mouth, not because its critics are giving it praise. hundred percent. But if you think about what's be been people happening, people go see this joint. A hundred percent. But that's this is the opposite of what's been happening, right? We've been getting told by the stars, the directors, and the executives on everything from Black Adam to Ant Man three to the Flash that these are the greatest things ever made, and they're so far from that. We're being lied to in a pretty disgraceful way to try to get our money in that opening weekend. And all these people know that the minute we see these movies, we're going to know that it's a fraud, that it's, that these are not actual classics, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm getting up going to the theaters. But eventually, like, it's not a great place to be, but at some point the bar will get low enough to like where one or more of these, you'll, you'll walk out pleasantly surprised. I, Blue, I don't. I don't want to put Blue Beetle in that category just because it's such a small scale film. But like, like I said, for forty five minutes or an hour of that movie, I was I was feeling it. I was like, this is they they have something here. And then it kind of like I told you in review went off the rails a little bit. But um, you know, I, I'm I, I take that right about now from from one of these movies where I just walk out and I'm like, you know, it's uneven, but like we got there. We got to the finish line and I had a really good time. And it's been a while since I could kind of genuinely say that. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah, Wakanda true. forever, but that was so long that it, and it was it was kind of jumbled that I, even there I was a little bit like why why did we you know why did we do this why did we do that but I did legitimately enjoy that one so that that's probably the last time I had a really good time with the movie. I haven't been to the movie. I mean, I saw I went to the movies to see Spider Man, uh, Miles Morales one, this Into the Spider Verse. Oh, Spider Verse, yeah. Well, that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, you, saw, you saw it. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, Spider Verse movies are, are are both quite good. Isn't it? My kid really likes uh, into this into the first one. She hasn't seen the second one yet, but she really likes the first one. Um, and then like you know, Guardians three. I had a good time. Like I enjoyed yes, that. Yes, that was yes, nice, yes, You know, yes, that was yes, a yes, nice yes, time at the movies. But yes, it did feel yes, like an yes. ending. So like yes, I'm kind of yes. looking for that like st- starting point. I'm, I want to feel like I've got some momentum coming out of there where I'm like I can't wait to see what's next. And Guardians was like, all right, I had a nice time with these characters and I'm ready. I'm ready to move on. So a little different. Yeah, let us know in the comment section. I know we talked a lot of different things here, but uh, all in uh, in service of the superhero genre to find out where can we turn to get back on track towards excitement and and and, and build up and and see what happens next. None of that exists for me anyway, and for many of you out there. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think the MCU needs to do with Secret Wars. Um, what you think they're going to do. There's always rumors about this and that, but there's nothing concrete. And we're supposed to have a D23 coming up when? Why? Well, I mean, we would normally have it kind of in, what, November or whatever. But, like, again, with, with the inability of these participants to promote, I just don't see how we're on track for that unless the strikes get resolved. But there hasn't been any uh, announcement about the cancellation of it, correct? No, there's no reason to, because I mean, if all we know, they could sign an agreement tomorrow, and they, you know, the actors True. and the creators go right back on the trail to promote. So that's fine. But, but yeah, no, I mean, I think 
similar to Comic-Con, I think D23 is tough to really have a lot of, you know, oomph to it if you don't have the, the main the main people involved. Yeah. So. yeah, well, let us know in the comment section below. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!